Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Riptides Square, which is a square that I designed as part of the Patchwork Mystery Crochet Along. This square uh, is made up of four different colors of a worsted weight yarn. I will be using Vanna's Choice, but of course you may use whatever color you would like. Uh, you will need four colors just a, um, a small amount of each, approximately uh, 50 yards, uh, 75 yards of each different color, okay? We are also going to be using a six millimeter crochet hook. Your final square is going to measure about 12 by 12 inches and look something like this. It is made using a very textured raised ripple stitch which is one of my favorite stitches to use in crochet and what makes this look unique is just simply the color placement uh, that I have chosen for this square. You may find a free copy of the written crochet pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And while you're here watching this video, if you are new to my channel, please uh, take a moment, uh, browse it a little bit, check it out, and of course subscribe uh, through that little button there on the right hand corner to my channel. I update this channel weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, let's grab some yarn, a worsted weight yarn, and a crochet six millimeter crochet hook, and let's crochet. So as I mentioned, uh, I will be using four different colors for my square today. Uh, this darker blue will be my color A. My color B is this medium blue. I have a very pale blue here for my color C, and then a light gray for my color D. So we will be working uh, with all four of these colors here today. To begin your Riptides square, you are going to start by taking your color A, and you're going to chain 39 chains. Once again, the free version of this crochet pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. I have also provided the direct link for you in the notes of this video. So to begin, start by making a chain of 39 stitches. Once you have your 39 stitches, you're going to begin row 1 by double crocheting in the fourth chain from your hook. So count in one, two, three, four. In that fourth chain, you're going to double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the fourth chain, yarn over and drop a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your double crochet stitch. You're then going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across to the end of your chain. At the end of row one, you are going to have a total of 37 stitches. In this pattern, your chain three at the beginning of your row always counts as a stitch, so you will always treat it as a stitch. So at the end of this row, you will have a total of 37 stitches. You are then going to chain one and turn your work. Row two, you're simply going to single crochet in that first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch all the way across. Once again, you will have a total of 37 stitches. Remember to cro uh, single crochet your final stitch in the top of that chain three. I'm at the end of my row two here and I'm just single crocheting in the top of my chain three. 
Now, if you take a look at your pattern at the end of row two, it's going to ask you to change to your color B, which for me is this medium blue. Now there are a number of people, uh, a number of ways that uh, you may like to change your color. I'm just going to show you a quick way that uh, I prefer to use, which involves no knots and gives me a uh, a very seamless change. And you can also use this technique for joining a new ball of yarn as well. So what I'm going to do is I have my final stitch here in the top of my chain three. It's a single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to draw up a loop. I'm going to just simply begin my single crochet stitch. Now because I want to switch with, to my color B for the next row, I'm going to drop my color A, I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook, and then I'm simply going to draw that color B through those two loops to complete the stitch. You'll then want to pull your color A a little bit tighter and your color B just to close up the stitch a little bit more. But then you will see that your color B is on your hook and ready to go. So then for row three, using color B, we're going to chain three. And remember that this counts as a double crochet stitch. We're going to turn our work. Now your color A, you may choose at this point to fasten off and to weave in your ends, okay? So for row three with color B, I've chained three. This counts as my first double crochet stitch. I'm now then going, now going to begin working some of that texture that you saw, the raised ripple stitch. To do that, I'm going to skip this first single crochet stitch up top but working around the post of the double crochet down below it, I'm going to work one front post triple stitch. So this is the single crochet stitch up here, but I'm going to skip that. Instead, I'm going to work around the post of this double crochet stitch down there. I'm going to work a front post triple stitch. To work your front post triple stitch, you're going to yarn over twice. You're going to insert your hook around the post, so from right through, come back out the left side of your post. You're going to then yarn over and draw up a loop, bringing it around the post of that stitch. You'll have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and draw through two loops, yarn over and draw through two more loops, and yarn over and draw through your last two loops. That is your front post triple crochet. It's a triple crochet worked around the post of the double crochet stitch two rows below. Next I'm going to double crochet in the next single crochet. So I've skipped that one just in the next single crochet stitch work one double crochet stitch. You're now going to repeat all the way across. So I have a front post triple followed by double crochet stitch and now I want another front post triple stitch. So skip that next single crochet and working in the, around the post of the double crochet two rows below, you're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook from right through to left around that post, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through two loops, yarn over, draw through two more, yarn over and draw through two more, your front post triple crochet double crochet in the next single crochet stitch. Skip the next single crochet and front post triple around the double crochet below it. And then double crochet in the next single crochet stitch. So I'll pull back here for a sec so you can see what is happening. If you look up at the top, out of my single crochet stitches, I have a double crochet, and then I skip one, double crochet, skip one single crochet, double crochet. That's what it looks like from the top. From the bottom, from the front, you're going to see your triple, front post triple here. Then you're going to have a skipped double crochet stitch, followed by another front post triple stitch. So there will always be one double crochet stitch in between your front post triples and there will always be one skipped single crochet stitch in between your double crochet stitches up top. So you're going to continue that 
all the way across, front post triple, followed by double crochet all the way to the end, your final stitch, where you will place one double crochet stitch. At the end of row three, you are going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. For row four, you're going to simply single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And when you come to the end of your row four, you are going to get ready and you're going to change to your color B. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across and change to your color C. Sorry, I think I said B there. We're gonna change to color C. I am just switching over now to my color C which is this lighter pale blue. And then I'm all set to go for row five. For row five, we're going to chain three with our new color C, and we're going to turn our work. We now wanna continue on with some of that front post triple work, but we want to stagger these stitches so that they're going to show up in between. It's going to give us that ripple effect. So uh, to begin row five, after you've chained three, you're going to skip that first single crochet that you've worked your chain three out of, because remember that chain three is a stitch, and you're going to double crochet in the next single crochet stitch. You're then going to skip the next single crochet, and you're going to front post triple around the double crochet below, two rows below. So that front post triple stitch is going to land right in between the other two front post triples down below. Okay, so front post triple, double crochet in the next single crochet. And now you are all set to continue that repeat all the way across. So front post triple stitch, you're going to skip the next single crochet stitch, working in that double crochet two rows below, front post triple, and double crochet in the next single crochet stitch. Front post triple, and double crochet. So repeat that all the way across. When you come to your final two stitches, you're going to work a double crochet stitch in each of those final two stitches. So just as at the beginning of your row, you started off with two double crochet stitches, your chain three and your double crochet, those um, two there. At the end of your row, you're going to finish off with two double crochet stitches. At the end of row five, you can see my final two double crochet stitches there. You're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work, and you're once again going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you come to the end of your row, you are going to switch to your color D. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across, and switch to color D. For row seven, using your color D, you're going to begin by chaining three, which, which counts as your double crochet stitch. I haven't fastened off any of my ends. You might be doing so by now, which would make it a little less uh, messy there at the end. Okay, so with your color D, you're going to uh, chain three, 
and you're going to skip that first single crochet stitch and you're going to skip the next single crochet stitch but working in around the post of the double crochet two rows below you're going to work a front post triple stitch so front post triple followed by a double crochet in the next single crochet stitch then you're going to repeat that all the way across just as you did for that uh, row there with your color B. So you're going to repeat front post triple followed by a double crochet stitch. Repeat that all the way across and you will finish off your row with a double crochet stitch in that final stitch. At the end of row 7 you're going to chain 1 and turn your work. For row 8 you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you come, back, uh, come to the end of your row you are going to switch or change to your color C. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you come to the end of your row, change to your color C. For row 9, using your color C, you're going to chain 3. You're going to skip that first single crochet stitch and double crochet in the next single crochet. Then next you're going to front post triple in the next double crochet two rows below. Then double crochet in the next single crochet stitch. You'll know the pattern by now so you're going to keep repeating that all the way across. When you come to the final two stitches you will simply work a double crochet stitch in each of those final two stitches. I am working my final two double crochet stitches there at the end of row nine and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. Row ten you're going to single crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. When you come to the end of your row 10, you're going to switch to your color B. Single crochet in each stitch all the way across and switch to your color B. Switching back to my color B there at the end of row 10. Once you have your color B on your hook, you're going to chain three and turn your work. For row 11 with color B, you are going to uh, skip that first single crochet, skip the next single crochet, and then front post triple around the double crochet two rows below. double crochet in the next single crochet stitch and front post triple around the next double crochet two rows below. Going to continue to repeat that all the way across. When you come to the end of your row you're going to double crochet in that final stitch and turn your work. I'll just take a moment to show you your progress so far. So this is rows um, 1 through to the start of row 11. And this is what your work should look like in your chosen colors. At 
the end of row 11 you're going to chain one and turn your work you're going to continue working in your color B and you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across when you come to the end of row 12 you are going to change over to your color A so single crochet in each stitch all the way across and then switch to your color A For row 13, you have switched to your color A, you're going to chain 3, and you're then going to double crochet in the next single crochet stitch, followed by a front post triple in the next double crochet stitch two rows below. Double crochet in the next single crochet stitch, followed by a front post triple in the next double crochet two rows below continue that all the way across to the end of your row you are going to end in the last two stitches with a double crochet stitch in each of those last two stitches so now at the end of row 13 this is what your uh, square is going to look like and you're about one-third of the way through your square from now on for the rest of the pattern so for rows 14 through to rows 31 you are going to repeat the work you've already done so you're going to repeat starting at row 2 which is your single crochet in your color A all the way across. You're going to repeat rows 2 through to 13 once and then you're going to go back to your row 2 and you're going to repeat rows 2 until 7 once. If that sounds confusing head on over to my blog. Once again the link is provided there in the notes for this video and uh, there you can see it written out or simply rewind this video if you'd like and you're going to repeat for rows 14 to 31 you're going to repeat rows 2 through to 13 so that's from that single crochet up to what we just worked you're going to repeat that once and then you're going to repeat rows 2 through to 7 once more once you have done that come on back here and I will show you how to work the final edging on your riptide square Okay, welcome back everyone. So by now you will hopefully have completed up to rows 31 of your square and this is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have, you're going to end with your uh, color D, which was my light gray. That was the final row that I did. And I started with my color A. If you're counting the stripes that you have worked into your square, you're going to have three rows of your color A in total. So there's one down the bottom, two and then three and that's how you'll know you're getting close to the end you're going to finish off with your color D up there so now you can see I haven't woven in any of my ends yet um, but you will want to do so at this point in time before you work your final edging the color of your edging is up to you I decided to use my darker color there uh, which was my color A, my darker blue. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you how to work the edging with uh, today. So to work your edging what you're going to do is you're going to start with your square facing you with the right side up and you're going to head up to that top right hand corner. In that corner stitch you're going to insert your hook and you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in that top corner. You're then going to work a simple single crochet edging all the way around. So you're going to start by working your first single crochet stitch in that corner stitch. And then you're going to single crochet in each of the next 35 stitches. So single crochet in each of the next 35 stitches that will bring you uh, to your last stitch there on this top row. And 
this is my 35th stitch you'll have one stitch left over there your corner stitch when you come to that corner stitch you're going to work three single crochet stitches in that corner stitch so there's one all in the same stitch two and three and what that's that's going to do is it's going to bring you around so that you're able to work around this rough or raw edge of your panel we are now going to work another 35 single crochet stitches evenly along this rough edge now this is where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes I find you want it to be fairly even so sometimes what I will do is I will add a stitch marker about halfway down and then I need know that I need to have half of my single crochet stitches on this side and half on the other side Okay, so do whatever works for you, but you want to work 35 single crochet stitches evenly all the way across. Once you have worked 35 stitches evenly across that rough edge of your panel, you'll come back to your next corner stitch and you're going to once again work 3 single crochet stitches in that corner stitch. It will bring you along now to work along the bottom edge of your square. You're then going to single crochet 35, uh, one single crochet stitch in each of the next 35, so all the way across. And you're basically you're going to repeat uh, what you did for the other sides. Work three single crochet stitches in your corner stitch and then work 35 single crochet stitches along that final rough edge of your square. Now when you come back to your first corner you are only going to work two single crochet stitches in that final corner before you join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. So for each side you'll have a total of three single crochet stitches in each corner and 35 single crochet stitches worked along each edge. Once you come back to that first corner you're going to work your final two single crochet stitches in that corner, join your yarn with a slip stitch, fasten off and then weave in any ends uh, that you may have left. And here you are once you have come all the way around uh, you will fasten off, weave in your ends, and then you'll have finished your square. Now some yarn that you may have chosen, uh, you may want to block your square to make sure that it is 12 by 12 inches so that it matches up with the rest of your patchwork mystery crochet along blanket. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the Riptides square. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can also check me out there across social media on Facebook and Instagram and, uh, and Twitter as well. I hope uh, that you enjoyed the Riptide Square and until next time, happy crocheting! Bye!